This is the Verrazano Bridge. And that is about the only thing you're going to get right in the whole video, isn't it, Adam? Well, it appears that Adam, Level Earth Observer, is a big fan of mine and he was watching my recent live stream. Only he did disagree with one thing I mentioned. Perhaps you'd better tell us about it, Adam. This is the Verrazano Bridge and apparently it proves curvature. Listen to this nonsense. I don't think it's going to be nonsense, Leo. That guy really knows what he's talking about. They're not going to they don't accept the accuracy, accuracy of things like the was it the Verrazano Bridge, the, the towers, um, which it, both which are perpendicular but actually are further apart at the top than the bottom. I hope you listen carefully to what I said, Adam. They are both perpendicular, but the tops are further apart than the bottoms. Let's see how long it takes you to straw man me. So all Captain Sensible here is claiming the towers on the Verrazano Bridge are not true all the way out. They're slightly out of plumb, leaning away from each other. No, Adam, I did not say that they are out of plumb, out of true. They are perfectly plumb. I did not say that they lean away from each other. I just said they're further away from each other at the top than the bottom. That is a different thing. Let's just check to see what I said. The, the towers, um which it both which are perpendicular but actually are further apart at the top than the bottom. Hmm. Claiming that's a result of Earth curvature. Well, as both of those towers are perpendicular at 90 degrees to the surface of the Earth, and yet they're further apart at the top than the bottom, you've got to come up with another explanation. Now, no one doubts that may be the case. Oh, all right then. Because in engineering, especially when you've got something that has to take a load, it makes a, more, a lot more sense that it leans away from the direction it's taken to the load, i.e. to counteract the weight it's about to take. I think you don't know how suspension bridges work. And here's a prime example. We've got a tower crane. We can see the tower comes up near enough straight, but when we get above the cab, we can see it reduces and comes back in an area known as the cat head or the a ray. Tower cranes, the cause of and the answer to all of life's problems. Proving my point. Now is this crane leaning back at the top because of the Earth's curve? Um. No. Oh, okay. It's back there like that to take into account and account for the load, the weight it has to take. One being the jib itself and two being the load it picks up. Cranes either account for that, either in the A-frame or in the counterweights itself at the back. Nope. I would have thought as an experienced tower crane operative personnel person that you would know a little more about them. They're not built with a cat's head and jib support cables or ties in order to balance. They're built with the cat's head and the jib support ties in order to pick up larger weights. It's for strength, and I'll show you why. Here's your typical tower crane with an A-frame or cat head at the top. On one side, you've got the concrete counterbalance weights. On the other side, with the working arm, you have the weight that you're lifting. Now, the counterbalance weights want to go downwards. The load you're lifting wants to go downwards. Those forces cause stress and strain on the jib and the counter jib. But by using jib support ties or cables to a cat head, you can transmit those stresses and strains and then direct them down the center of the tower. Now there are such things as flat top cranes that don't have a cat head. They're easier to construct and of course have a lower overall height, but they have different disadvantages. The stresses caused by the counterbalance on the counter jib and the load on the jib aren't redistributed. 
This means that flat top cranes, apart from a few specialist ones, cannot lift the same loads that tower cranes with cat heads can lift. It's nothing to do with balance, it's to do with strength. I'm sure that we all subscribe and read cranestodaymagazine.com. Here it is talking about flat tops and how they're getting better at lifting larger weights. Large capacity tower cranes used to be the hammerheads. Now flat top cranes are increasing their lifting power and finding new applications. Several factors make flat tops desirable. Having no superstructure means they can be used closely together. The jib of one can pass under its neighbor. Ease and simplicity of erection is another plus. Well, there you go, easy erection. One disadvantage though, is that A-frames and pendant lines of conventional tower cranes impart strength. Lacking this bracing means that flat tops lift comparatively less than traditional hammerhead tower cranes. So it's nothing to do with balance and all to do with strength. So I'm afraid, Captain Sensible, your Verrazano bridge is not built the way it's built because of curvature. It's built that way so it can take the load. I think I'm going to need to dumb this down a bit. The towers are not built leaning in any direction for any reason. Both towers are 100% perfectly perpendicular, plumb, upright, at 90 degrees to the surface of the earth. And yet, they're still further away at the top than the bottom. Do you get it now? Dear, oh dear. I guess not. No, we, we refuse the dull, ridiculous, deluded claims that that's down to curvature. There's no demonstrable science in the world to prove that. And I've just shown you real world examples that make an absolute mockery of why you think that's happened. Um, I'm gonna say, no, you haven't. Captain Sensible, it's like that to take the load of the weight. In the bridges case, it would be the road and the, tr the cars traveling across it. Oh dear, this clown thinks somehow bridges are designed to take into account the curve, yet the water beneath the bridge shows no curvature whatsoever. Well, the Verrazano bridge towers are around an inch and a half further apart at the top than the bottom, so you're certainly not going to see that sort of amount of curvature by eye. But let's see if we can teach you to bridge. So here we've got our two towers with a catenary cable, suspenders and the deck. We've got downward vertical forces because of the mass of the entire structure. We've also got two horizontal forces pulling towards the middle because of all the weight in between the two of them. This is the problem that you're talking about. You're saying it would want to bend the towers in. And so therefore they're built with a slight lean apart from each other. Well, my angelic little cupcake, this is where you're going wrong. Let's go back to the beginning. Here's our basic bridge. And as it stands, yes, you would get those lateral forces. So draw a mirror line in the center of the bridge and reflect it outwards to each end. That's better. And it looks more like a suspension bridge, doesn't it? So each side of each tower, you've got an approach and half of the main span. Now, Adam, I'd like to give you 10 seconds to think about it and why that's important, but that time won't help you. So I'll just tell you. Now, each side of the tower, you've got the same mass of bridge, the same force, pulling left, pulling right. So the sum of those forces is zero. So as the towers aren't being pulled in one direction or the other, they don't need to lead away to counteract it. And the reason he's saying this, he's making excuses because he doesn't want to get involved in force the line, which is a mechanical measurement proving scientifically the globe is nonsense ah this absolutely ridiculous fast the line experiment i'll be doing a full video about that really soon claims that there could be options for fraud with the the paypal or the you know the the, the account set up for funds admittedly the the top band of a hundred thousand needs to be reduced you don't need that that's that gives people like this character here 
ammunition. But his whole point is he refuses to do the test because we don't take it into a, we don't trust or believe his claims that bridges take into account the curve. Not having a fucking clue that they're built that way to take into account the weight, not curve. Oh, dear, dear. Ah, well. Okay. Oh, dearie dear, indeed. Now, Adam, we saw this diagram a little earlier where I showed that due to the fact that the bridge is, in effect, mirrored, there would be an equal force pulling in each direction, giving you a net force of zero. So you wouldn't need your towers leaning in any direction. But what's more, those catenary cables aren't fastened to the tops of the towers. They ride over or through the tops of the towers. They're freely moving. So they ain't going to pull them in any direction. So therefore those towers, as said right at the start, are absolutely 100% upright, plumb, true, 90 degrees and perpendicular. But still, they're further apart at the top than the bottom due to the curve of the earth. You total gimboid, gimboid, gimboid. Ah oh dear, and let's not forget, this man milked his balloon. What? This man milked his balloon footage, scam, pantomime, like a fucking dairy farmer on speed, but doesn't want to get involved when actually putting this to bed with a mechanical measurement. As I said, I will be doing a full video showing why force the line or fast the line is a total joke. But it's quite happy to add adverts. Yep. PayPal's. Uh-huh. Donations. Mm. Uh, people who are uh, regularly giving money as well. I uh, don't even know what you call them. I want to give massive thanks to all of my supporting members and patrons. Thank you all so very much. And Adam, shall I let you in on a secret? Do you know how much money I asked for, for my mage project? Nothing, not a penny. However, I had very kind sponsors who contacted me. I had generous donations made without asking, and I appreciate every single one of them, but I didn't ask for a penny. In fact, around a month ago, I posted this. Today I received an extremely kind email with an incredibly generous offer of financial support regarding my dear moon application from one of you. I will say I was stunned with the generosity. Just shows what an incredibly great community this is and what wonderful people you all are. I have replied to the sender, turning the offer down with my immense thanks. So don't you dare accuse me of scamming or ripping people off. That was an offer of several hundred pounds with no effort on my part. And I thanked him and refused it. Mm. This is a typical Globagandist representative online, swayed by the materialistic philosophy. Yeah, so um, basically, if you want to appear on my channel, you better pay me. How much, how much are you offering? £10,000. Okay, well, as soon as the check clears, you're good to go then, Dan. Hmm. So why don't you get involved, show some, so show some honesty, integrity put your hand in your pocket for some real science son oh i did with my mage project but what about your scientific experiments adam let's see how far you dug your hand into your pocket to carry out some scientific experiments enjoy first we have the great tea break experiment where he splashed out on a cup of tea, sat in his cab and apparently proves something because the tea has ripples in it. Brilliant. Then our hero invested in a tennis ball and a length of hairy string. He dangled it, which apparently disproved the rotation of the earth somehow. Hmm. Wonderful, Adam. Brilliant. And finally, emptying his bank account, he used an old jam jar and some more string. This highly technical experiment 
apparently shows that NASA are liars and that we couldn't possibly have gone to the moon. Adam is waiting as we speak to be called to collect his Nobel Prize. I'd laughed previously at Adam's experiments, but I couldn't remember where they were, so big thanks to Where's Wally for derp mining Adam's channel and digging those clips out for me. Appreciate it, pal. So, Adam, when you have done some proper experiments, come back to me. When you can debunk my mage experiment, come back to me. As I said, I will be doing a full debunk video on Fast the Line, so please keep an eye out for that. Adam, you really are the gift that keeps on giving. You consistently show us that you know absolutely nothing about anything. Why is it? Not having a fucking clue. Yeah, thought as much. Until next time, stay sensible. Shut up and sit down.